In part two of this tutorial series, we're going to learn how to make seamless loops in After Effects and blend those into a cinemagraph. So in part one, we got started with some stock to make a really simple animation, which we're now going to loop. We're going to make a new comp from that and rename it to blend so you can keep track of what is what. We're going to put a marker right in the middle and that's going to be the start of the blend. And then you drag it over so that it's going off the left side, uh, adjust your play area, duplicate it, and then bring that marker over to uh, the end so it'll basically blend into itself. And we're, we're going to do a transparency blend here. So from 0 to 100, and that's it. So now is that animation we made before is blending into itself. So it's just going forever. And this is exactly what we need to be able to drop it onto the windshield. So just trim it down to 50 frames so it fits with the rest of our loop. And we'll take it over into the main comp. So now we drop it into the main comp. And I've sped this video up because it's just me experimenting and making little adjustments here and there, which is always what you have to do to get it to where you want it to be. And here it is just uh, with some transparency and you can already tell it's looking kind of decent. Like it's, you can tell it's what we want. So I just cut it out with a little mask and you can already start to see it take shape. It starts to look a little bit better with uh, some opacity. Now I'll add another mask to the side and set that to subtract and give it a nice feather to help it blend in a lot better. Now I want it to blend in a little bit better, not be so blue. I want it to look more like clouds on a windshield would actually look. So I'm going to desaturate it and add some curves in as well. Because when you see a reflection in the windshield, you're not really seeing a perfect representation of what's there. It's more like a, a high contrast version. So I'm just going to play with these adjustments until I get it to a point that feels right. Because mostly you have to go on your gut and see what feels right and have some reference pictures to look at and imitate what actually happens in nature. If you don't want this effect to stand out so much, it shouldn't be too noticeable. It should really be almost an afterthought to the viewer. It just adds something a little bit extra. So I'm going to add some more curves, nudge it around till I, I get to a point where I like it. Now I'm going to go through and add some more masks just to get rid of this reflection effect where we don't want it. And every adjustment like this you can make will help the effect be more convincing. Because like I said, you don't want it to stand out. You want it to look as natural as possible and just lend the effect to the overall cinemagraph, not really be a thing in and of itself. So now I have the mask how I like it, and I'm going to play it for a bit and see if there's any more changes that I want to make. And to me, it looks like it just stands out too much. It really draws your eye way, way too much. So I'm going to adjust the opacity until it gets to a subtle level that I like. And that feels good to me. So the next part I want to tackle is over here on the reflections on the side of the car, the door and the side mirror. We have a gravel driveway and some trees, and that's going to be great to make it look like this car is moving. So now I'm back in Adobe Stock. I'm going to look for a nice picture of gravel to use. And I like this one here. It's nice and wide, which will be really helpful for what we need it for. So here it is in a comp in After Effects. Make it down to 1080. And so I'm going to start by scaling it up and squishing it around, which is it's OK because it's going to be distorted. And then like we did with the clouds, I'm going to create a keyframe at the beginning and another at the end and position it going this way. So I have some sideways movement. 
And now I think that's not really going to be enough movement. We want we want this to really reflect some speed. So I'm going to scale it up and squish it down, adjusting my keyframes. Make make sure it's positioned right. And then you'll see much faster looking there. So I think this is going to work for us. And now we're going to name the comp so we stay organized and make a new comp from that. Name that uh, blend as well. And what we're going to do is the same thing we did with the sky. So we want it to blend into itself right at a 50 frame interval. So it's going to line up with all the animations that we shot in camera and the sky. So put a marker there, drag it to frame one, and then duplicate it and drag that marker now back. Now you want to make an opacity keyframe right at the beginning. Take that down to zero then go to the end and bring it back up to 100. Now what it's doing is it's blending into itself. So the part that we put off to the left of the timeline is now being blended in over time into itself into a perfect loop. So just trim it down to 50 frames and make sure to Command S, save your documents, and we'll pick this up in part three.